everyone, it's Alyssa here at the Township of Washington Public Library and our adult craft for April, it's April now, surprise, spring is totally here so we are making a lovely spring color block candle. Yeah, it's kind of bright in here but I have three different colors that I was testing out so each person will get two, you'll get a fragrance, you'll get a jar, all of the jars are different, you'll get a wick to put in there and I'll show you in this video how to get everything done, how to make it work. Some other supplies you'll need, you'll need um, a heat resistant spoon, a stir, something that you can use, a pot. Um, I'll talk about the, the supplies if you want to use a pot or something disposable. I have a dedicated candle and soap making pot. Um, and then I also like these disposable bowls. Um, again, you can use anything disposable, or if you don't mind, you can use something like glass where the scent rinses off pretty easily. Um, so yeah, I also like to have a funnel for this as well, uh, but I do like these because they're flexible, but I'll show you how it works and what we need. But this is a fun one, and it's really easy, and it smells amazing in here. So, let's get started with our candle. Over here I have my wax starting to melt. This is on my burner at a low heat. And it goes pretty quickly. So one of the things that I like to suggest, if you don't have a pot that is dedicated to crafting, this is my dedicated candle and soap pot, you can get a disposable aluminum tray and you can put that over the heat as long as you're doing over a low heat, um, or you can microwave your wax in these kinds of disposable bowls, which is fine, whichever you would like. But I have a dedicated little crafting pot. So I'm letting my wax melt, and I'm going to keep it moving. I don't want it to burn. My heat is really low, so it's not going to, but I can never be too sure. See, it's starting to melt. In the meantime, what I've done, everybody has different glass jars if you've gotten the kit for this project, but uh, this is the one that I happen to have. What I've done in the meantime is I have hot glued my wick to as close to the center of this as I can. Um, the more centered it is, the better it will be for burning. So you want to get it in the center, that way it tunnels down nice and evenly. And then I do have a little chopstick here to help me keep my wick centered when I go to pour my wax in. So I have these disposable bowls for my wax as well. And also since we're doing this fun color technique, I have something to prop it up in the bowl. I have a little measuring cup here. Um, it's not perfect, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, and then I have my fragrance oil. Everyone got something different. The one that I have, um, I chose because it's a scent that I like. It's not one that I think I gave to anybody else because it's an autumn scent, but it's called Autumn Fig Harvest. Uh, and then, of course, we have the wax coloring cubes, which I'll talk about in a moment. Do I give this a little stir? Getting a little closer. So we're using these dedicated wax coloring cubes. There are a few different combinations of colors that I've provided. Uh, because this is suspended correctly, and it's the kind of color molecule that will work best for candle burning. I know that there are a lot of recycle your wax crayons for colors. It will not burn correctly. It does look nice, but it just doesn't always burn correctly because the color molecules and the wax molecules clog your wick. There's some science behind it that I don't totally understand because it's all particles and molecules, but what happens is it kind of clogs your wick, and the way candles work, as we know, is the wax travels up and feeds the flame. If your wick gets clogged with these larger wax or color particles, which is what happens when you use a crayon, a melted crayon for color, or even mica, you will clog your wick and then the wax won't be able to travel up and fuel your fire. You'll get uneven burning or it will kind of snuff itself out after a certain amount of time, which we don't want. So we're using dedicated coloring products for candles you can find 
online or at craft supply stores. Just continue to let this melt, we're almost there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this up into some different, into three different portions here because I'm gonna have um, my purple, I have green, I think there's also a coral color that I've provided, um, and then I'm gonna leave the center natural. But I'm going to add the fragrance to the entire pot so the whole thing can be scented. Um, and then I'll prop this up, however it is I figure it out, like that, and that's how we'll go. I also have um, a disposable utensil to mix my colors in with my wax. So I'm going to split these, like I said, I'm going to split these up and we'll reserve some for coloring and then we'll pour them back in to make sure they're heated up. Uh, you'll see the whole process. All right, so I'm going to add my fragrance in now. This is pretty much all melted. Just one little piece left. So I'm going to add my fragrance now. To scent the entire thing. And stir it up, make sure it's well incorporated. Okay, I'm going to turn my burner off while I separate these into what I hope will be three even portions. This smells amazing. It really smells like autumn. So I'm gonna split this up into, I have uh, three bowls over here. Try to portion this out as evenly as possible. If you have a food scale, uh, especially a digital one, this would be a nice time to use it. You can also use a funnel to help you pour, your, pour this a little neater. I'm not really being too precise here, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. Right, so the reason that we will need to pour this back into the pot eventually is because each layer is going to take about half an hour to an hour to dry. And that always depends on your individual house and its conditions, that's okay. We'll kind of pop this um, out of out of the bowl and then put it back in. Um, so I'm gonna start with one of my colors. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my lavender color and let this melt in. Lavender, and I have to add some extra in. All right, the thing about the lavender is that because our wax is kind of yellowy, and when working on the color wheel, the, the lavender is just kind of canceling out the yellow and making this kind of like a white clear. So I'm just adding some extra color here. I have a I have a funnel. You can also I would fill this a little less high than I did. You can kind of do it in small batches to see exactly how much you need to fill it up. Um, I've given you more than enough wax to fill up your jars, um, just to make it more easy to pour and see exactly what I would like, exactly how I would like to fill it up. there slowly it is still quite hot can of take a peek what do I think I think that 
it's pretty good. It's like almost halfway, but it is to the rim of like my particular jar. And then, again, with this leftover wax that you have, you can buy yourself another glass container suitable for candle making. Um, you could also make wax melts too. You can pop the extras out and put it in a wax warmer. Um, so you definitely have plenty. And then this is just going to dry for about half an hour at least. Because we don't want, when we rewarm this, we don't want it to um, melt this and kind of break the barrier between the colors. I might add just a little bit more. Okay, I just changed how I propped this up because I want to fill it up a little bit more with the purple. Just a little bit more. Also a little easier to fill this way. Okay. Good. That's more. That's more like it. That's more like halfway. Okay, and right now I'm not really worried about the wick drooping to one side because these little angles that we're going to do with the two colors aren't really going to affect the positioning of the wick. Um, if I could move this, I would show you. It's really not, really not in the wick yet. It's just the bottom. And so then when we do our last one, which has no color, um, then we'll need to use the chopstick to prop up the wick. If you're always, con if you're concerned, you can always grab your chopstick, make sure your wick is tight, and then tape it that way, because otherwise gravity will bring it down, so you could tape it. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry for about half an hour, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the green, my other color, and then I'll show you how we do the last part. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so here's where we are so far. Uh, I did the other color, and so I have both. So when I go to tip this jar this way to fill in my angle this way. Um, just be aware, especially if you have one of the round jars, if you got one of the round jars for the kit, because of the weight and again, gravity, you'll just need to prop it up a little bit better and more secure. Otherwise, it'll always want to roll over there. But it looks pretty nice. So these colors are kind of turning out to be pretty pastel and gentle, but they are working pretty nicely. So everybody who got the kit got two colors. I'm testing out the third color, uh, just so I know what we're getting ourselves into. So I'm melting now the coral one. And we're gonna put that in the center. And so again, for this one, we want to make sure that we have our chopstick, pencil, whatever it is that you have, to hold our wick nice and straight to promote even burning for our candle. And so again, this is just on really low because it will burn if you leave it on too long or too high. Yes, your wax will burn and turn brown and smell terrible. Ask me how I know. Don't ask me how I know. So I have a lot of leftover wax. So what you can do, again, I like these paper bowls because they do separate and you can pop this out pretty easily. Another trick, and this works for your wax tart warmer too. If you, do, if you don't wanna get another glass and you just wanna make these into wax melts, which you can totally do, um, if you have a wax warmer and this works for your warmer tray, pop it in the freezer. It contracts a little bit and it pops out a little easier. But you see this one, this disc is coming out nice and easy. So I think I'm going to make these into tarts for my wax warmer at home so I don't use up any more of our lovely little glasses. Those are all for you. Okay, so this is almost melted so I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see me pour this in, we'll let it set, and we'll be done. I'm gonna pour this directly in through my funnel here because I don't need to reserve any. I'm just gonna go with what I got. So 
I'm just gonna make sure that this is centered. It is not, so make sure that your wick is wrapped pretty tightly around your chopstick or pencil, whatever straight edge you have. You can add a little tape or glue or something that, whatever works for you. Straight, and then that's it, we'll let it dry. Yep, so I'm gonna wait at least half an hour. I'll probably wait an hour now for this last one because it's gonna kind of rewarm everything up a little bit. I don't really want it to rewarm totally, but this one is nice and easy because it's just straight up, and then we'll have our three colors, or uh, if you got the kit, it's two colors. Uh, well, it's te technically still three because you'll get two colors and then you'll leave one plain. Fun. All right, so I'll come back when this is dry and we'll take a look at the finished product. Here's a little tip for cleaning your pot if you are using a pot that you have dedicated to your crafts. What I like to do while the wax is still hot and melted, I like to pour in very, very cold water. And as you can see, most of the wax solid floats towards the top. It hardens and floats towards the top. You can then skim that off with a spoon, throw that in the garbage, and the rest you use very, very hot water and a good grease killing soap, dish soap, and that breaks down the rest of it as long as you're using very, very hot water because it becomes like a an oily residue uh, because it is made from an oil, a soybean oil wax. Okay, so that's how you do that. And otherwise you can use something disposable, but I like to have a pot that is dedicated straight to my craft. Okay, we're all done. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Take a look. So you can see these are really nice pastel colors, which is perfect for spring. Um, make sure you trim your wick to, I believe it's about like half an inch uh, or like quarter of an inch. It's really not that long at all. So you're gonna trim your wick before you start burning it. Um, like I said, I like to let this cure for um, about 24 hours. Just make sure it's nice and firm and you get a good burn on your wax. But yes, yeah, so you'll get two of the colors. It'll be a random choice. Um, so you can kind of layer them whichever way you will. So one of them will be plain, one and two of them will be a color. So you'll have fun with that. I had fun with that. And that's, that's it. This entire room smells amazing right now because of, because of this little this little friend. So I hope that you all have fun with it and uh, just enjoying something different with your candle making that we haven't done before. So go out and create and have fun. Let me know how you like it. All right, everyone. See you next time.